Sing that song outside of church and just sing it around the house or in the car, anything like that. Anybody? I bet y'all kids have heard him sing. I just about bet on that deal. You ever hear your dad sing around the house and stuff? Come on. Those are some precious memories. Be sure to hang on to them. <laughs> Amen. I mean it. Amen. I remember my <laughs> singing that song right there. Because it's tall. And my grandma. In the car, headed up to my grandmother's home in the car for a I wouldn't trade those kind of memories for nothing. Um, Brother Danny, if you wouldn't mind, I'm going to call on you to pray tonight. Um, I pray for little Evie, and there's a couple. There's a lady that works at Walmart in the deli. Her name's Ellen, and her husband's name's Mike. They're not what you, I call close friends, but I was talking to her, and she asked for prayer for her husband, Mike, who they had that COVID thing. Hmm. And for some reason, it caused him to have blood clots uh, back a I don't know how long it's been, but he's still having trouble with that. Is there any other request tonight other than what we, Sister Kelly? An unspoken prayer for a family at work. Okay. The Lord knows who it is. And All right. You know who I was thinking about the other day? The, the couple that got married here. I wonder whatever happened to her. I, I see. I've seen him down at Hatfield. She still works at Dyson. She still works. Yeah. Her, well, her boyfriend that she was seeing um, passed away from COVID. Mm -hmm. If you'll find out for me where that girl lives, I'll take uh, Florine with me. Thank you, Florine. Would you like to go with me to visit that girl? Well, I have to be careful. I have to be picky. There's also a uh, family at uh, Hatton or down the mountain cold. Uh, the lady fell off the ladder at Tyson. And it's just a oh, kind of. Boy, that's um, that's dangerous. She's, she's gone. But, Ooh. Anyone else? Is, um, Amanda that used to go to church here? Yes. Um, she sent me a text the other night and asked us to pray for her. She's, you know, she's back here in Nina, but she said she went to a doctor's appointment and she has an enlarged heart and she's having some symptoms and stuff. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. I need to get right on that. So I will. She asked for some. Oh, she lives right down there. Mm -hmm. uh, we were sitting at work today and the cop rode in right there beside our office and went about two or three houses down. Somebody got shot and killed there. So uh, it's getting pretty bad in the Hosea Town, Rosemont area. Was that in Hosea Town? It was in Broken Bow. Right there behind the little bit. We had to lock the door. They didn't want nobody. So, you know, if, so. if, if you'll help remind me, I need to ask you some things about that around there. Charlie, not knowing some of the things that you felt me to come aware of, has got a cabin over there for a little break for him and his wife. I need to ask you some things. Mm -hmm. it, 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 Stay it, it, in and out from Satan. Yeah. Right. Anyone else? Dave, got anything on your mind? Brother, Brother Danny, if you'd lead us in prayer, and let's pray with him. Oh, wait. Sorry. Cadence, we're going to get that in there, I promise. Think she has COVID. And, uh, that's, that's, it, the one thing about it though, this, this strain of it, it's like a flu. I mean, I'm not saying it is flu, because I'm not a doctor, but it's it's different. It's not as hot. Yeah. Oh, okay. 
I've got an idea about that. I may be wrong. But these folks that have had it and got over it should answer it. They have proven that there's good microbes on your hand as well as bad ones. I mean, Brother Ron, he got he had it over it. Destiny had it over it. That's why I'm not afraid of all I think I'm going to get the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but that's true. I mean, there's some positive things. Okay, Brother Danny, if you would, please. And Father, tonight we bring this before you tonight, Lord. Yes, uh, sometimes it seems like this whole world's in a mess. It seems like, it seems like the whole world is in wickedness everywhere you look, Lord. Father, there's sickness everywhere you look, and people that's in need everywhere you look. And Father, tonight we'll start this out and just bring them little easy to you, Father, and just knowing that you that you know where she's at, Father, the problem, you know what it is. And Father, we know that you can take care of it, Father, through the doctor, whatever it might take. And Father, I'm just thankful that we can bring this before you, knowing that she'll come back and she'll be a healthy little girl when she does. Father, just thank you for that. And thank you. Father, we believe that, that you'll take care of her. So we'll just leave that in your hands, Father. If there's other requests that's been made tonight, the one that was made about the, the one that got injured and died. And oh, Lord. There's that's others that died, that. Father. There's people that are hurting over that. And Father, we ask that you'll watch over each one of these, Father, take care of the situation. And, People that sick, Lord, and people here that know the people that sick, Father, let the request be made and made known to you. Father, let the let the healing be taking place, Father. We just know that everywhere we look, Father, that all we can do seem like we just come to you and bring it to you and just expect the best, Father. And that's that's all we can do sometimes. Father, we're just thankful that you allow us to come tonight to be together and to enjoy this fellowship tonight, Father, the eating, the drinking, and whatever it might be. Father, just the message tonight, Father, let it stir our hearts and I'll just guide and direct us in this service and we'll give you the praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Amen. Pray for Daryl. Yeah. His heart is full. So thankful. My day out I'm so thankful for my son. I am. There's things I could I get bragging on. I won't. But I'm so thankful for him. Amen. We're going to talk about the main thing we're going to talk about tonight is the goal of prophecy. Now, y'all are going to have a real treat coming up. We had one last Sunday evening. And we're going to have Brother Dave. It's going to take him a couple more times to get all the things together he's got together. He's been working on it quite a while. And um, time passed. Uh, so I thought we'd study this a little bit tonight. I got a couple of things to say, but young people, the one I'm going to say something key tonight. Two things. If you get both of these key things that I say, they're brand new. There's one thing I've got a good memory about what I've preached, and uh, they're brand new. If you get both of them keys. You're going to have a reward. I'll just put it that way. Okay? Uh, you're getting too big for ice cream. <laughs> no, I don't know if I like it pretty good. Oh, did I tell you all about this thing that Aaron got? It's a blessing. That's a brand new 18 foot uh, triple slide. You could have three people can go down at a time, probably break everybody's elbows, but it'd be fun. <laughs> you and who else? Uh, no, 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 no. Marsh and I to get me wet, well, though. But to yeah. introduce that, this, I want to tell you a little bit about Bible study. Now, you're going to run into people that don't have the opportunity now to hear what y'all are hearing. I promise. How many of you realize that a lot of churches, in order to study the Bible, they do a lot, a tremendous amount of word study. They'll take a word, and then they go into a concordance, and they get the Greek definition, and just, they know that definition of that word. But that's not Bible study. No. You can do that, and there's also in the concordance, you can look it up in Hebrew, just knowing where it is, like 1 John 3, 2, and look that thing up and get that word, a word out of that verse. But that's not Bible study. It's really not. 
it's word study and it's uh, y'all know the word entomology it, it has it has an effect on grammar it'll make you a good grammarian you'll know some things about grammar but it's not bible study um what bible bible study is not vertical now i'm not saying you can't get some good things sometimes but ronnie has a couple things he's explained doing that uh, but it's a very small amount of his teaching. By the way, we're going to have, gosh, I've got too many subjects in here. Hang on. <laughs> I've got a question coming up too with Brother Dave and his series and some other things. But, uh, <laughs> oh, amen. Um, where was I? Oh, oh. Works that the way to learn is all right. You do works, and you learned this right off. That's why you go to Bible study has been so fruitful. You get a word here, and you cross reference to another verse, and another verse in your language, so in English, and in another verse, and another verse. That's the way you study the Bible. And boy, you will you you'll have uh, chapters. Let's think. Let me give you one. We've been teaching about prophecy a little bit. Um, you know, over there in Ezekiel 38, where it talks about Gog and Magog, do you know how many preachers that you can talk to that don't know that Gog is not only in that passage, but he's in several other passages in the Bible? Mm -hmm. All right, so you take that word and you go in there and do some of the things that some of these scholars have done with that one word, and then they bring this knowledge, but it's of that one word, not even checking the cross references in their Bible, whereby they would gain revelation. Okay. Gog is mentioned several times, and the cross referencing on Gog and Magog has to do with the Antichrist. That doesn't even have to do with countries. Okay? So what I'm saying. Don't sell yourself short listening to some scholar because you'll, you'll get a, a good grammar lesson or you'll get a good guess about things that are going to happen prophetically. And I mean, even when you realize that's Israel's department, um, you will gain, just like maybe this week, take one cup God in a concordance if y'all got one, or... You know, there's uh, electronic concordances. Now, I use those. Those things are fast, and you can get a lot of verses in there real quick. Ones, ones that have to do with what it is that you're studying. Okay. So I would encourage you to remember when you're talking to someone that you're trying to help understand about right division or any other thing in the Bible or any other thing, uh, remember that word study vertical study of the Bible is not study about just one word. Okay? That's it. And, but, but horizontal study of the word of God, you take a scripture here, compare it with this scripture, compare it with this scripture, with this scripture. And that way, like Brother Charlie's already proven, because he's talked about this Bible studies. He's already proven this. He learned that right off. And, and, and it helps expand the revelation that he can understand from the word of God. This is God, this is God's revealed words, W-O-R-D-S folks. What you have here, you can't get in a Greek concordance. You can't get that knowledge from a Hebrew concordance or a lexicon. You get it from reading the Bible in your language. Uh, I'll even go out on a limb here. I'll go out on a limb. Now this is the final authority, I believe with all my heart, of God on this earth to the English speaking people. All right, but God has a good Bible in Spanish. All right, if I was, a, however, if I was a Spanish missionary, I would translate as close to this as I could, Brother Ronnie. Uh, a lot of them do that, that are our King James Bible believing thread. So it's not that we don't know that God has had this book in other languages. He's had it in seven major languages of the world. English is the last one. The, the major language of the earth today, in fact, computer language, is English. <coughs> At the UN, they use English. 
in their computers. Why do they not use Swahili? Because that's not the, the language that God is using more universally. At one time, when Paul was writing, when he was writing his letters in Greek, it was a Greek-speaking world. But did you know that that Koine Greek that they spoke then is a dead language and nobody on the earth speaks that anymore? Did you know that? That's a fact. It's a dead language. No one speaks it. So how's God going to use that? One word at a time? I don't know. You see the point? But this English Bible, boy, that stuff coming at you, and you can do it right at home, and you can gain such revelation from the Lord. Uh, I, I've always invited folks to take, when, when I teach something up here, and I, I get a scripture, Brother Danny helps me with this. Uh, he's, he's always on the ball with verses. If I get something going crazy uh, or get off of it, he helps me pull back in. I did that one time. I did it accidentally, but I did it. I was teaching about hell. Brother Danny helped me. I said, now, wait a minute. Let's look at this. <laughs> and I invite all of you to do that. You're all Christians, and you're all smart. There's not a dumb dumb in here but me. <laughs> I just rely on the Holy Spirit, and I rely on the written word of God. I've learned this cross-referencing for information from the Holy Spirit rather than just depending on word studies. Can you imagine? Let's say you go to a church. I'll give you an illustration. Go to a church for a Bible study on Wednesday night. You get in that church, and the lesson for that evening is the word love. All right? So they're going to teach you two main things. They're going to teach you. They'll take you to the Greek word phileo and the Greek word agape, and they'll show you that. And then they'll give you this dissertation on those two words. That's still not Bible knowledge. That's not Bible knowledge. That's not knowledge of the written word of God. That's just about one word. You see the point? If you see it, we'll move on. I won't, I won't beat the dead horse. But listen, folks, that's such an advantage to you. You just, you just get to reading the Bible and you will see. It's just a wonderful, wonderful tool. cross reference horizontal study of the word of God it makes sense because Genesis is the beginning God is eternal his word is eternal he's eternal beginning over here alpha omega see beginning ending it goes out from revelation goes out into eternity it comes in from eternity into Genesis and it runs in a circle God's revelation runs in a circle doesn't that make perfect sense everything else is the touches to runs in a circle. The universe runs in circles. <laughs> so, okay, now, to the lesson tonight. I'll be a short one. Because uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> hmm. Just kidding. We'll do what we can. The time passed, and I want to talk about the goal of prophecy a little bit. What is the goal of prophecy? Oh, one more thing. Uh, after Brother Dave finishes his series, uh, uh, these, there's a couple of guys that's already volunteered now. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Brother Danny and Brother Ron are going to teach on Sunday evenings. Now I'm inviting people from around here and telling them that if they'll come down here, they can get some prophecy teaching on our, in our Sunday evening lesson. Um, so that will be two more, Brother Dave needs two more 30 minute sessions uh, and then Brother Danny and then Brother Ronnie Brother Ronnie, and I didn't know this I'll show you how the Holy Spirit's working around this church Brother Ronnie already had half of, uh, at least half wasn't it? No, I, I, started, I, I started working on a lesson on, yeah. working on a prophetic lesson I didn't know so the Lord, so we'll have at least five evenings, Sunday evenings with that in there. That will help round out some of the things that you learn. It will help. I promise you it will help. I, I can't hardly wait. I thought that Sunday night was real good. Amen. Real good. So anyway, the goal of prophecy. What is the goal of prophecy? We're instructed in the scriptures 
as written by Paul. Y'all hear this a lot, but it's, you can't overdo it. We're to rightly divide the word of truth. We, we learn the differences. So the major difference is between Israel and the church, and there's some other groups in the Bible. Uh, when you do this, that releases the power of the word of God into your life for revelation, see? That's why you need to know how to study the Bible. That's why the horizontal thing I explained. You need to learn that cross reference because that paper, that just, you don't have to be a scholar and you don't have to be taught in a seminary to get as much or even more information than a lot of them have because they're so busy doing word study. And I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. Um, there are three natural divisions that we've talked about quite a bit that Paul has. And just as natural, it's fallen off the law. He talks about time past. He talks about but now. And he talks about the future. Uh, time, uh, things to come. Now that's very important to remember. That's your Bible. That's the way your Bible is set up. Time past, but now, ages to come. See, let me make it more practical. So I hadn't heard this. You've got the Old Testament, which actually runs the power of it and the doctrine of it, to Acts chapter 7, or so, thereabouts, to Acts chapter 7. So that's time past. That puts Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in time past, doctrinally. That, that's important. All right, then you've got Paul's books. That's now. Then you've got Hebrews through Revelation. That's things to come, times to come. The future. So it's a practical thing. In other words, when Paul was writing about it, he, he very well knew what he was talking about. And uh, when he was, he had, when Paul began writing the book of uh, Hebrews, was already written. That's how I know Paul didn't write it. Because Paul got saved after the book of Hebrews was finished. Paul got saved after the book of James was finished. Can y'all remember that? He sure did. He didn't get saved until Acts 9. And the doctrine from the book of Hebrews is from Acts 1 to 7. Time passed. Not a lot of people know that. But that helps you. The breakdowns of this thing. We've got them. If it, if it's, it will help you on these little charts that we have. These little chart tracks. We hand them out to a lot of people, but it's good. I keep one around my house. I've got one up over my computer to house. You know, these things help you to remember and it helps you break down the Bible where you can get revelation from it. That's what you want. You want the knowledge that's contained in this Bible. Uh, if it matches a denomination, that's that's fine. If it don't, that's fine too. The Baptist Church does not tell us what our final authority is Brother Dan. When that happens, as you well know, not everybody's had that experience with some of the denominational blocks that keep you from understanding Revelation. Some of you have. Uh, but when you read the Bible, I, I want to I say this tonight too for those of you that are new. Trust your reading judgment. Trust your judgment. The Bible is the most sublime word book in the world. But did you know that the vocabulary of the Bible is not above in if, if a person gets a good education, Brother Ronnie, one to six through the sixth grade in this country. There's not a, there's very few words that'll go above that in the vocabulary of the Bible. Now it's most sublime, and there are things in here. I mean, yeah, you can't grade it. It's just things you learn, like how some of the things match up with some of the practical things that go on in your life, like Destiny talked about that evening. You know, you can see things, and, and that's, what, that's what God wants. Uh, look, I know, and it's not wrong to have a dependence of a sort on your teachers and preachers. It's not wrong to do that. However, at home, you, you can get blessed. The Holy, you can come in here so full of the Holy Spirit, and boy, we would have some services in the house. And youngsters, look, I realize the challenge you've got at your age group right now. I do. I understand that. 
And some people even go so far as to really make fun of them in front of other people. But there's ways. You just got to learn to be patient with those kind of folks. It's, but when you learn the Bible and you have these things in your heart, see, the Word of God sticks on you. That's why I use so many verses. It sticks to you. It helps you. That's the way it's supposed to work. The Holy Spirit will take it and make it real to you. Okay? There's nothing ever going to take the place of individual Bible study. Now, uh, we're here tonight to help you, to teach, and as an individual, but also as a church, to build up our church on the inside the best possible way we can. There are some things that's, that's in your hearts and lives, folks, that people need in Polk County, in Kirk County, in Oklahoma. They need it all around us. Now, I'm telling you the truth. They need it. And they'd be happier. They'd be more balanced. Balance, that's a key word for a Christian. Balance. Balance, that's why I have to take the time to talk about these things in prophecy because there's more than that in the Bible. And so the application of it is very important, but you have to keep things balanced. If you don't keep things balanced and you just take somebody else's word, you're going to get in a heap of trouble before you know. All right. So... We've got time passed, but now and ages to come. Uh, we'll look at time passed a little bit tonight. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. The most important vision in the Bible is prophecy and mystery. You know, you start combining those two, you've got real problems. There are prophetic things that concern the church in Paul's writings. That's different than studying prophecy of the Old Testament. It's much different. Much different. Different things are going to happen. I mean, you guys know the rapture is not for Israel. The rapture is for the church, body of Christ, right? Mm -hmm. Do y'all remember? Or this is something now I remember. Remember some of these things. If you come up with them after we get finished talking in a certain age group, the Apostle Paul is the only man in the Bible that ever wrote for and against circumstances. The most important division in the Bible is between prophecy and mystery. Um, look at Luke 170. Luke 170. Matthew, Mark, Luke. This is what John the Baptist Father Zacharias was saying, uh, let's see here. When John the Baptist was born, let's get verse 67. And his father Zacharias was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He means that. I'm not talking about any church in the body of Christ. That hadn't been revealed to anybody yet. And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us. We're talking about the national Israelites in the house of his servant David. Now watch. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So the Old Testament is filled with prophecies. The prophets taught about the future, certainly, of Israel. You've got to get that. If you take the prophecies of the Old Testament and place them in the church age, you might sell a book or two, but you're on dangerous ground. And in your understanding will not be fruitful about the mystery of Christ, which is something different. It won't be as fruitful as it could be. Um, when that's done, 90% of what these scholars are saying is conjecture. It's not provable. It's just what they think. They'll take Ezekiel 38 and try to apply it to Germany and Russia and a whole bunch of stuff. I've seen that done so many times, and it's not. It's not. And it's always the stage is setting. 
when you take the prophetic word of Israel and you try to put that in the church age, whether it's whatever it is, you're getting off. You can say it, but how many of them are fair with you and say to you that it's conjecture, either learned conjecture from somebody that taught them about it or their own conjecture? I could put out a lot of stuff, get the newspaper out, go into the Bible, get in the Old Testament and say a bunch of stuff to y'all. Might even make you give more money to the church that way. <laughs> but it's not fair. To teach something as a fact, you better have a scripture on it and it better be rightly divided. Now, now, let me explain something else. That does not mean, Brother Danny, Brother Danny has a gift. I've seen it, I've seen the Lord use it in him. But I hope I can explain this right, Brother Danny. It's hard with these kind of things. But he'll see, he'll go through a verse, just like Dave did Sunday night. Did y'all notice the way he handled that light? When the lights go out because it won't have any need of it. And in the context where he was, absolutely. See, Brother Danny has that. Brother Danny has taught like that. To where he'll read a verse and you'll get something brand new, entirely new from it and teach it. That's good. I'm not saying that's bad. That's good. That's good. That's why I want to do this thing in Protestant. I want to see what you're thinking. You know, to edify me. I need to edify like everybody else. So it's not like you have law on this. It's, I want to know what it is you see. And, um, but some people that weren't well read in the Bible, uh, to them, Brother Danny was a threat. I know that's true. And they'd say, uh, whatever. And it was just stupid, you know. He couldn't help it if his IQ was higher than theirs. <laughs> no, 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 I shouldn't say that. It was a gift. It was a gift. And I know it is. It comes from the Holy Spirit. So, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. It does not say he created the universe. It says he created heaven and earth. Right away, we've got two spheres that God is dealing with. Two large places, spheres, that God is dealing with. One heaven, one earth, first person of life. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. In fact, Boreen, the memory serves me, used that to help teach her son something about right division. He hadn't been around any of that. Genesis 1 and He got it. He got it. So, this is because God has a purpose for the earth distinct from his purpose concerning heaven. That's why we have to rightly divide these things. His purpose concerning the earth and Christ's reign upon it is the subject of prophecy. Look at 2 Peter 1 and verse 16. 2 Peter 1 and verse 16. Beginning there. Let me get over there. For, and this is Peter writing, of course, for we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For, that's where that term came from, the Holy Bible, his majesty. Um, that's why the English kings were called his majesty. Came from the Bible. For he received from God Father, honor and glory, when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mountain. Now, listen carefully to this verse. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. See, this is Peter, dealing with Israel, dealing with the circumcision. Whereunto you do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now I was taught initially in a Baptist church that this was talking about Christians 
But he wasn't talking about Christians. He was talking about the prophetic. Now we can understand what it's about, of course. But he's talking about the sure word of prophecy. He's not talking about the prophecy that Paul talked about, church prophecy. He's talking about the prophecy of the Jews. So his purpose concerning heaven, and that is the church. See, earth dealing with Israel, heaven dealing with the church, which is the body of Christ. As far as when we study the Bible, not every place, uh, there are some things that are hard to be understood, but it makes it a lot easier when you realize there's two things going on. His purpose concerning heaven and our, that is the church exaltation, there with Christ, is the subject of the mystery. Now, if you were taught like I was in a Baptist church, that the church goes out, then the church comes back. Now, I don't believe anymore the church is coming back to this earth to do what the Old Testament Israel is going to do with Jesus Christ, along with the 12 tribes and the 144,000. Now, I believe we'll have access to it. And you know where that revelation came from? That came from the Old Testament that I'm saying that on. You remember when Jacob had his dream? Yes. What's going up and down that <coughs> often? Do they go up or do they go down first? Did anybody notice? It's important. Ascending. Ascending. Exactly. They ascend first. Well, where are they if they're ascending into heaven? They're on the earth. So we're going to be fully aware, I believe, as the sons of God living in heaven of what's going on on the earth. And as far as fighting Armageddon and all that stuff, that's not us, folks. That's not us. You don't come back and kill people. <laughs> it's just, number one, that's just not what God has planned. Now, what God has planned for Israel, coming, Jesus coming back and killing the whole mess of people. War, physical, national, political, on the earth. That's not us. This is us. This is us. Look at Ephesians 2 4. Totally different revelation for the church's future. Ephesians 2 and verse 4. But God, who, I mean, I'll read a few verses here. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. See, we're made members of the body of Christ. By grace, you're saved, and has raised us up together. By faith, we understand this, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The concern of the outfit patrol of Jerusalem is not the concern of the church. It's the concern of Israel. In fact, Jesus told Paul not to preach anymore in Jerusalem when he was starting his ministry. And Jerusalem, as Brother Dave knows, is the center of this great leader Jewish prophecy. He knows it. You take Jerusalem out of the picture. Lots of things you cannot understand. So, verse 7 that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus in the ages to come. See that? That's us, and it's a little verse about us in the ages to come. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. We don't have any laws to perform, not of work, see. Lest any man should boast. Just simple faith and purpose. That see, that's what's hard for people to accept. They'd rather get themselves in some form under the law so they can feel like, you know, they're working. Well, let me tell you, if you get saved by grace and you begin to let the Holy Spirit lead you, you'll be doing more good works than you're dreaming. But it's not something that's alien to us, Brother Charlie. It's not something that I have to, you know, pick a job about. You do it. Marsha wrote a book. So I didn't tell her. I asked her, I said, could you do something maybe for children? I said, no. You see, what any law, the Holy Spirit. She's writing about what I'm talking about to you. Right? Writing the word of truth. Getting it on the level where a child can understand. 
ended up being good for children and parents. <laughs> but not of works, listing, and I'm not lifting her up, I'm just pointing out. The night, same thing, type of a deal happened. Um, and you use your gifts. Right? Does anybody remember Destiny's uh, Bible study that evening? I do. I got edified. Built up. Yeah. That's why I say Harrison. Now, I understand the difficulty. Now, let's be careful. I understand the difficulty in public speaking. I do. Peyton. But the more we do that, say, say that maybe God does have a call in your life or something. Teaching, pastor, missionary, something. Then practice what it is that you're getting is just as important as what it is that I'm getting. You see, that the Bible's coming at you, and then you turn around and give it back. That should not make you shy. In fact, with the grandfather you have, you should be more willing to do that. Now, he's had to take a little slack for it. You see my point? Uh, the gift and the understanding that you have it's what makes it, it's just church part of it. It's just a pleasure to pastor God. I love it. I just love it. And you say more and do more than you think. I guarantee you. Um, but Peyton, same for you. <coughs> same for you. And I've noticed, and I think it's wonderful. You don't shy away from this like you did at first. You see, you've grown. That information has been coming to you, that word of God, even before you landed here. That word of God, you get it at home by the grace of God. You get it, you've got some from other churches. I cannot tell you how bad that's needed. That is so needed. You're going to get the opportunities. Uh, then you're going to get opportunities to share knowledge with people. And when you do, then what you've learned from the Word of God, whether we spiked it a little bit here or not, if you learned it at home, or you learned some things about right division, it's going to be very important to those people. They don't know which way they're going. The devil is the cause of this. It's not the people. It's not really even the denominations. It's the devil's behind this. If you were fighting a war, and you could get into information headquarters, what they call it in the army, Intelligence. Intelligence. If you could get in there, intelligence service, and mess them up, we couldn't march together. You see, that's what's happened. All these new versions. I went to a church one night. I saw that illustrated real plain. They didn't know what they were doing. One he had asked the pastor to ask one for what it said in that version, one what it said in that version, one what it said in the living Bible. By the time he got finished, he didn't understand the thing. <laughs> it was pitiful. It was pitiful. So please remember that, Harrison. It's not that anybody's trying to put you on the spot. Um, it's a pastor's job to try and help people understand and search for the gifts that are in you. That's a pleasure when you're dealing with Christian people. Now, if you wouldn't say it wouldn't be any fun, you'd be trying to figure out some meanness to get into. <laughs> but not a worse. Danny set a good example there. I'm trying to get you off the book. Don't be afraid to say what it is that you've understood from the Bible. Okay? Same for everybody here. We can talk about it. We can learn. I can learn. Okay. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That's us. Unto good works. Which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That's us. Walking by the Spirit. Taught by the Apostle Paul, and of course by studying the other Bible, the other parts of the Bible, you're going to get some spiritual information from all of it. It's a spiritual book. Well, let me show you something about the Bible. Every verse in the Bible has three different applications. It sounds complicated, but when you think about it, it makes it really simple. One is doctrine. It should come first every time. 
because if you don't know what the doctrine for the church is, as opposed to the doctrine for Israel is, you won't know how to march. You won't know what to do. But when you read what Paul writes and you, you're, that's functioning in you, that's encouraging to you. I'm trying my best to encourage all the time. What you think, well, I don't do much. I'm just a kid or I'm just this or I'm just that. No, it's every bit of it's important. Right over, <coughs> right over. I don't know how he did it. He made his own way to church tonight. Take it home. It's easy to do. But he made his own way to church. Brooklyn, how'd you get to church tonight? See? Now, sometimes the preacher go and get it, I'll go and get it. But, oh, it rides a bus. It rides. There he is. You see? Now, get what? The Holy Spirit. That's the church, the body of Christ. That's not Israel. I'm not teaching him the law. So, there's a doctrinal application. The second application of the Word of God is historical. Every verse in that Bible has a historical setting. Okay? Now, it has to have a certain point in history. Um, Chase. Chase. You know Chase? Chase and Aaron, they asked for our prayers. Chase told me one day, he said, you know, Uncle Junior told me something about you. And I said, what is it? And it's helping him. Junior, he went through my friend. To his grandson, I mean his grandnephew, he said, Junior said, when you teach the Bible, you tell people who is it to. <laughs> That's rare. What, what every one of you is capable of doing. I'm trying to encourage you tonight. I'm not saying go and set the world on fire. I'm just saying when it comes to you, <laughs> you'll get your opportunity. You will get your opportunities. And he said, he said, you can explain who it's talking to, what passage, what book, and we can. We can do that. And part of that is a historical thing. I know the difference between Israel and the church. Israel, now there's an Israel today, God's not using them because they don't believe in Christ. They've been laid aside. Where did I learn that? Paul, the book of Romans. I didn't make that up. <laughs> All but wrong that it might sign. So you can't go to them and get any word of God. Where do you go? Now that ought to be easy. Where do you where do you go? Uh, but then the, but who's Paul teaching us about? Jesus Christ, ministry from heaven. That's where you go. Directly to Christ. You don't go to Mount Sinai. <laughs> but they did. Historical application, see? Job's oldest book in the Bible. In fact, they don't really know how old that book is. Uh, they know it's the oldest book. The Bible's older than Genesis. The actual book. Now the events, that's kind of hard to explain. The events of Genesis, the creation, everything obviously had to be done before Job could get on the scene. <laughs> but the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It's written first. It was written before the five books of Moses. I tried to explain that to a guy one time. He just wanted to argue with it anyway. Uh, he gave me a real hard time. Then just you, you just learn these things, and then you've got this. Now it's the spiritual application of every verse in that Bible. Ninety-nine percent of the churches in America teach a little bit of this. Hardly none of this. The doctrinal differences, they do not talk about them. They'll teach you the spiritual application, and some of them are terrific at it. That's why I asked Brother, said that about Brother Danny for them. He can see things when a spiritual application of Scripture from, he could find it in Job. You see what I'm saying? It's a little bit difficult. I don't know. You do it too. A little. That was still on there. He gets us all hung up. <laughs> Doctrinal, historical, and spiritual. Those are the three applications of every verse in this Bible. Now, what I'm doing tonight is a doctrinal lesson. I'm showing you the difference 
between time past and now. And sometimes it gets over in ages to come, which, which we're going to get probably a pretty good dose of here pretty soon through what they're doing on Sunday evening. All right, so believe me, uh, I'm so, I so appreciate you folks. And what you do, that will help balance this church. So don't be bashful about it. Don't be apprehensive about it or anxious about it. Just go ahead. If you was perfect and could walk on water, uh, you'd be Harrison. <laughs> oh, you'd be the Lord. Okay? So, all right, let me see. I think I've got one more thing here. Now, we've been teaching about this lesson. I, I, I've taught parts of this lesson before under other names. Taught teaching about Abraham. Um, here you go. Let me give you the, the purpose because it left time. The goal of prophecy. The goal of prophecy in time past is this. God's earthly, notice earthly purpose, is to make Jesus Christ the head over things in the earth through the instrument. I'll start over. Y'all listen carefully. So these things, these things aren't just prevalent everywhere. God's earthly purpose is to make Jesus Christ the head over things in the earth through the instrument of a kingdom vested in national Israel. The nation Israel was created to be God's earthly kingdom people. I'm not going to go through all the verses. I'll mention a couple. Exodus 19, 3 to 6. Exodus 15, 17 to 19. And Genesis 28, verse 17. Now, today, the preaching of one, one thing. We know Israel did not fulfill this goal during the first coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? They failed. Due to unbelief. That's Romans 9 and 10. Let Rather than rising, Israel has temporarily fallen away. But now, us, us. And if, and if everyone that was in the body of Christ understood this, then Satan wouldn't be getting such advantage over us and have us marching in so many different directions. Okay. Denominationalism. Um, so many different Bible versions. But the preaching of the gospel of grace is going out to Jew and Gentile alike. Let's, we'll tell both sets of them with the middle wall broken down. The middle wall, and I'll have to stop for tonight. The middle wall is the fact that when God called Abraham, when God called Abraham and he became Abraham and circumcised him. Okay? So in the Bible you've got circumcision, you've got uncircumcision. Where is the uncircumcision? Now I don't mean everybody has to be. I'm saying that, that this, uh, that's what the middle wall is. Okay? That identified two types of people on the earth. The ones that were marked for service to Jehovah God in the Old Testament and those that were not. And finally, the last statement, Paul is the only writer in the Bible, the only writer in the Bible that dealt with that subject. Now why would that be if he was preaching the same thing that Brother Paul? He was not. The ministry that Paul was given is Jesus' ministry from heaven. The ministry of the twelve in Jesus' ministry while he was on the planet. After he left, he got a hold of Paul on the road to Damascus and began teaching him about this new thing called the mystery of Christ. It's Jesus' heavenly ministry. Now, if you get the political kingdoms of this earth mixed up with that, you've got problems. And you'll end up not having an understanding, a good understanding of either side. Okay. But most of all, you'll lose a greater understanding of who you are and who the church the body of Christ is and what it is that makes God happy with our lives. That's, that's such a blessed thing to know. Not everything you do, and it don't have to be, but 
some churches teach you to feel so guilty you never can feel good about yourself. You know why? They teach the political part of the law or some tradition, not recognizing that that middle wall of partition has been broken down between Israel and the Gentiles. There's no circumcision today as far as, as a, a doctrinal thing taught. There's not, there isn't anything like that today. I mean, we'd be a pretty sorry lot <laughs> if we taught you when you become a member of a local church. <laughs> We had to go, you had to go to the doctor. We'll pay for it. <laughs> no, folks. That's silly. I can just see Paul laughing up in heaven. That stupid way I put that. <laughs> but that's the middle wall of partition. He's talking about Paul said it was. That's it. Let's stand. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about my study and give you a little bit of a lesson on the old prophecy. And when uh, now, when you when you get hold of any teacher, let, let's you get hold of any teacher. I want you to remember. I want you to remember this. Hold them to that division because if they're not rightly dividing, you have to. But that does not mean, brother Lawrence, you can't learn some things from them. You can learn some things from them. I listened today to a tape of a preacher. I won't say who. It's not necessary. He was talking about New Jerusalem. And he was just so wrong, it was pathetic. Because he just makes it his church. So he gave some scripture to make his point. So I went and looked up the three scriptures. And I said, sitting there, how on earth did you ever get that? See, that's why it's an advantage to you to learn to cross-reference the Bible. Don't just take what the Baptists think about it. Please. Now, we do believe in the term security, but that's according to what Paul wrote about it. It's not something just because we're Baptists. But anyway, all right, I'll stop. I hope that illustrates Brittany. Yes, and I want to get Owen to introduce that tomorrow. They're removing it tomorrow? Or getting a new one? All right, well, we pray for him. Remember the previous prayers we prayed? Pray for him. Every one of those that you can remember. If not, just ask the Lord to bless the prayer requests that were here tonight. And uh, he knows what's going on. Ask him to bless little Evie, of course, and all these other things. Uh, Brother Danny prayed about. Amen. Does anybody have anything? Prayer request? Another prayer request? All right. Let's ask the Lord to bless the food tonight on fellowship. And uh, amen. Brother Peyton, did you get those two keys I gave out tonight? Think about it. I just want you to dismiss this. If you would, dismiss us with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for today, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings, Lord. Thank you for everything you do, Lord. Pray for me, dear brother, pray for us, Lord. Pray that you be with all the families, Lord. And I pray that you be with. Everybody as they're at work, Lord, pray to be with everybody as they're traveling, Lord. Pray to bless us with our bodies, Lord, in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I'll pray and find me up. And all God's people up. Set. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.